Even during his lifetime, Jean Renoir was generally regarded as the greatest of French picture makers, but today, a decade after his death, Renoir, yes, he was the youngest son of the famous painter, has more and more come to be considered by international critics and connoisseurs as the most sublime picture maker poet of the Western world. Nine of Renoir's best, most representative pictures are now available, from his earliest success in sound to his last film made for French television and never before seen in America. One time I asked Renoir if, while he was making a picture, did he know what the work would finally look like? And he said, of course not. If I know, there would be no reason to make the picture. And maybe that's why Renoir's pictures never lose their sense of spontaneity, of freshness and discovery. Even such a somewhat technically primitive early talkie like La Chienne, the bitch from 1931, only Renoir's second sound picture, still has a living, breathing vitality very rare in films from that period with an extraordinary performance by the great French actor Michel Simon, to whom Renoir said this picture was an homage about a timid man driven to murder by his love for a woman. Five films and five years later, in 1936, Renoir released an even more remarkable film, The Crime of Mr. Lang, a picture that had a remarkable influence on the 50s French New Wave, in particular Francois Truffaut, with an incendiary theme about the murder of a swindling brute by a dreamy artist. It now seems more revolutionary in style and idea than ever. Two years later, Renoir made probably his greatest international success, the first foreign language film ever nominated for the Best Picture Oscar, and the one film Orson Welles said he would save if he had to save only one. The Grand Illusion, still considered generally by all historians to be one of the ten finest films of all time, a humanist picture set in a First World War German POW camp with a brilliant cast starring Jean Gabin, Pierre Frenet, Marcel Dalio, and Eric von Stroheim. And the following year, Renoir made another film about war, a very different one, the French Revolution, La Marseillaise, a sweeping yet intimate epic among the finest, most human period films ever made. And so, at the age of 44, Renoir in 1938 stood at the forefront of French directors, critically acclaimed the world over and successful at the international box office. Yet the very next year, the tragi comedy he released virtually ended his career in France for 20 years. The rules of the game was so hated on its initial French run that people damaged the theater in anger. 25 years later, an international poll of critics voted it third best film ever made. Certainly among Renoir's greatest works, co-starring Renoir himself and set during a sometimes farcical weekend house party among the upper middle class, which ends in tragedy. <laughs> Devastated by this picture's failure, Renoir and his dear wife Dido left France for America, settled in Los Angeles where they kept their home ever after. Renoir made five brilliant American pictures here, then in 1950 traveled to India to fulfill a long-awaited event. The son of the great Impressionist makes his first film in color. Captain the River, based on Rumor Godin's classic novel about a large English family living on the banks of an Indian river and one young daughter's painful lessons of love and death. Stunningly photographed, beautifully acted by a largely non-professional cast among the timeless international classics. I thought about the magic of the innumerable gods, steps leading from a noisy, harassed world to the calm, purifying waters of the river. In 1955, Renoir finally returned to France and made some very different kinds of films. Instead of natural settings, he became fascinated, as he wrote, by the inner truth often concealed behind purely artificial environments, such as this delightful romantic comedy fantasy, Alana and the Men, starring Ingrid Bergman as a Polish princess who's broke in turn-of-the-century Paris, or this one, set 20 years earlier in the Paris of the 1880s. French Can Can, starring Jean Gabin. Renoir called it an act of homage to our calling, show business. The director had said that as he aged, all he could hope to give to this cruel world was his love. And his final gesture on film came in 1969, 10 years before he died. A little theater of Jean Renoir, with Renoir himself as host to four attractions, a touching fable of two beggars in the style of Hans Christian Andersen, a comic opera about a housewife's affection for her vacuum cleaner, an old song done by Jean Moreau, and a luminous and unusual final love story, a triangle of tolerance and wisdom. The whole an amazing mixture of reality and artifice from the greatest of film masters. <laughs>